Yeah, I like that. I like, I like that approach a lot. Um, and I think the one thing that a lot of traders struggle with is knowing when to trade a range expansion type trade and when to look for a mean reversion. You know, they've got these kind of tools in their arsenal, if you like, and they go, right, well, I've, I've got this really good kind of pullback from trend breakout strategy. Oh, and I'm being stopped out again. And it and they're kind of aligning themselves not really with the current market condition. So your strategy of, okay, let's use Bollinger Bands, which is generally a mean reverting type tool, uh, pivot points, and then you talked about options. That kind of gives you, hey, we're in a mean reversing environment. Let me look at the levels where we potentially could reverse and roll over. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, the, the thing with like Bollinger Bands, for example, you know, you don't necessarily have to come from a, from a sort of, um, you know, a statistical background or an econometrics background to understand that, you know, that how these kind of realized volatility measures work, but they, they obviously capture a specific amount of distributions and 95% of distributions. They work really well in a, in a sideways trending market, for example, the RSI is at 50, price moves up to the, 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 uh, the upper Bollinger Band. But then again, you know, you're looking for, you're looking for that, that, that time when price when when the, the supply comes into the market and you know i keep talking about the idea about you know who's in the market at any one time and when we're talking to, to new clients about fx trading for example i mean who is who, who who is moving the flow of capital around this is really really fascinating report comes out every three years by the bank of international settlements the triannual survey that actually surveys a significant amount of the fx players in around the world and you can actually see you know who who who's doing all the stuff? Whether it's you know um, you know the, the investment banks, whether it's the asset managers, the insurance companies, the hedge funds, the reserve managers, and and so then that this is what you're talking about is when you when you get this kind of supply coming into the market, it tells you a story. You know, it's like the matrix. You're looking at the matrix, and it's all coming down, and you look at it, and you you don't really understand what it is. But when you actually have a grasp of supply and demand that's in the market, that's what the price is telling you. That's what the price action is telling you. It's telling you a story and it's telling you an aggregation of all these crazy players, you know, what they're doing at one time. So you can go and get a Bollinger Band, for example. But the most important thing is to wait for that supply to come in to give you that confirmation of the trade. Yeah, great. And I think that a lot of people uh, don't look at it like you do, which is an excellent way of stepping back a little bit and just thinking, hey, who's, in, who's, who's moving the market at the moment? Why is it moving? Is nobody interested because we've got something coming up that we're waiting for? Or is everybody piling in because they believe interest rate? You know, and thinking rather than just seeing tick, 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 tick on the screen, which we're all guilty of, right, Chris? You know, we're, sometimes we're there, we're so focused in on the, on the five minute or whatever, we forget. But it's stepping back, isn't it, having that bigger picture. Good stuff. All right, so, sorry, you were going to say, add something then? Yeah, I mean, I tend to, I mean, the, for my sort of macro situation, I mean, I start with, um, I start with weekly charts to get a really good rhythm and feel. I, I think, you know, taking out to those sort of timeframes gives you a, a really clear understanding about what's actually happening. Of course, then you take it down into your four hour charts and bits and pieces. But I think when I'm looking at that big picture, because it is, you know, that, that sort of strategy, I might, I might only place, you know, four, four to six trades a week. It's not, it's not a particularly active strategy. The mean reversion strategy, for example, might be, you know, might be something that you do much more actively um, but you know the macro one is, is is certainly one that we we would we would certainly look to trade less and hold the positions for a longer period of time. You know we start with the big picture of the charts and then we work our way in and and, and into the sort of the, the, the lower time frames from there. Yeah, I suppose while the macro theme is still in play, you may as well ride it for as long as it, it's in play, right? And that's that's the that's the hedge fund models. So Chris, you're talking about let's talk about risk management strategies. There's a difference uh, between how you'd probably approach a mean reversion and a range expansion now. Um, a lot of people struggle with where to put their stops. A lot of people are either getting stopped out too much because they're just getting pinged constantly to death by a thousand cuts syndrome, or they've got it so wide, the risk reward ratio is so poor, it's hardly even worth taking the deal. So how do you approach risk management? Well, I mean, I think risk, I mean, risk is, is such a broad term, but um, you know, we, we, are, we are managers of risk. That's, that's what we do as traders whether it's when we initiate a position or when we're in a trade, we're also constantly looking out of what cause, could cause volatility moves and, and risk moves. So we are, we, I think everyone just needs to realise that what we do as, as traders is manage risk first and foremost. But when, when I'm, let's talk about the entry point and address that part of the question. Um, you know, for me, the most important part is volatility. 
whether you're looking at realized volatility or statistical fact or whether you're looking at you know what's implied in the market in terms of movement um, which again this is something that we put out to clients on a regular basis is the expected move not just what's happened and you can use realized volatility um, through things like the average true range and that will give you a sense of the sort of range we've been seeing on a true basis and of course in that situation if you've got a 50.8 ATR in um, in Aussie dollar and you're putting your stop 10 points away, the, the prospect of you just getting stopped out is obviously very high. Um, and, you know, that obviously, you know, the, 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 the wider that range, well, that will dictate how much you want to take on in terms of risk. But again, that sort of determines on how long you're going to be in the trade and your strategy more broadly as well. But in terms of the way that I think about things, you know, the, the, the level of risk that I'm taking on will be a function of how much volatility there is both on a historical basis and also on an implied basis. We offer um, a whole range of, of tools uh, in, in MT4 and MT5 called Smart Trader Tools. And one that's really, really cool is this, this one called the um, XLRTD, where you can actually pull out prices from MT4 and you can work out the historical volatility in, in the model, not just in, using an ATR, but that will also dictate the sort of average moves that you've been seeing. And again, that can be really useful for understanding how much risk you're taking on and when you understand how much risk you're taking of course you know you can then work out how much reward you 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 really need to target for example um you know if i'm if i've got a sort of win loss ratio and i don't target win loss ratios but if i was to you know say that i was only going to get 33 percent of my trades right and that's the sort of sort of historical patterns that i get then you know i know i need to go in and ideally target a, a sort of um, one dollar of risk for two dollars of reward, and, and that's how I go. So, you know, I, I, I use volatility very much and price range expansion to understand how much risk I'm taking on, and that will adjudicate how much, you know, that my position size is going to change accordingly. There. Yeah, yeah, good, that's good advice. That's great advice because too many people are trying to do something, uh, trying to force what they want on the market when the market's not there. The market's swinging wildly. You're like, well, I've got to take a ten tick stop. Well, you're just going to get hammered. Um, actually, that's another good good point. Is there a sweet spot for you with volatility? You know, is there a point where you go, it's so quiet, I'm not interested, or it's just too wild? Um, it's not. I've got no edge here. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it depends on the product. I mean, I, I trade a lot of indices and. Um, you know, we say we say a lot of business in you know, Wall Street and the DAX, uh, Germany 30, for example, you know, they're classic ones. Um, but for me as a trader, you know, I really like, uh, well, I, uh, historically, I used to really like the VIX being in between or the, the, the S&P implied volatility over the coming 30 days, which is a product we offer called the VIX. And I used to really like that in the, the 18 to 22 percent range. That was really that was a really nice sweet spot. And you can actually sort of work out the expected movement in the S&P or the US 500 um, by just simply getting that VIX level and then dividing it by 15.9. And that will give you the implied sort of daily move up and down. Um, but, you know, when you've got it in that 18 to 22 percent spot, you know, the, the movement was good, but it wasn't wild, you know, and you didn't get that kind of liquidity issue where the market could just go down and whack it just straight back up again. Yeah. And you've got to constantly be in front of your charts. You know, my, 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 my trading is that I don't have to be in front of the screens the whole time. Um, you know, I, I trade, I, I don't want, I, I will hold positions overnight, but, and, and for a period of time, but I don't want to be in front of the screens the whole period of time. And, you know, the VIX in, in that kind of spot would mean that you, you, you didn't get that sort of 3% down and then 5% up. Like we'd be soaring, you know, the COVID situation in, in, in February to March of 2020, you know, where, where markets could just, just move on a dime because of liquidity issues coming through. Circuit breaker, circuit breaker, circuit breaker, circuit breaker. <laughs> it was, I'm sure they weren't supposed to be used as a break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're talking limit up, but everyone's become experts in limit down and, yeah. You know all these circuit breakers, as you rightly point out. So, you know these are these are all things that we had to contend with on a, on, a, on a day and wait for that tick to go up. And yeah, it was crazy. You know, and, and for but for me, I, I like movement like everyone else, and we all like a bit of movement. But um, and some people really like extreme movement. You know, you know, cut, you know if you get on the right side of it, you can get three hundred points in Wall Street. You know, straight off the bat, and and people love those conditions. But for me, for my trading. You know, it's that sweet spot of 18 to 22 percent. As things have gone on, though, I mean, I think probably a little bit higher, you know, going into sort of 25 percent, so a better level for me. And in FX volatility, I like a little bit more than what we're seeing because it's pretty low at the moment. Um, but, you know, I like a bit of movement, but nothing too wild. I know a lot of people really will disagree and say, no, we love it. We love we love extreme volatility. Um, but, you know, that really depends on your strategy. <laughs>